Hello YouTubers! Here it is a week later. Uh, we're on part two of the bumper. Uh, I got all the parts for it. I got. I received all the parts that I ordered for it. I actually put it together on Friday and I helped my, my uh, Sean, the guy I work with, helped me just slide the bumper on. Flo was at work and, and I zipped it together. But I'll show you what I came up with and I'll have a few more things I'm going to throw on this video besides just the bumper. I've had more stuff break on my truck. That's what happens when you own a Chevy or a Ford. It's funny, I haven't had a Chevy for 20 some years and I haven't had as many problems with this one <laughs> as I have all my other cars, but it is what it is. So here's the bracket. This is the one that went towards the end of the bumper. You can see that it's all, that's all bent. These other two brackets were so bent out of shape I couldn't uh, uh, get them to line up and then I had to buy a bunch of these um, pieces here these little things to pop in under the bumper of those one you saw in the, on the video that I was trying to get those out and I'll tell you what those things were a bear to get back in again uh, but let me show you the ending factor here so got everything bolted back up and lines up pretty good I think it turned out really well I gotta do another coat of uh, some touch up there um, I got and this cover that snaps over this thing here I'll have to show you that hopefully in the shade uh, I stripped out one bolt and uh, it's it's under there somewhere. But this is the cover. It goes over the top. I'll just do this with one hand here. It stays on there without falling off. I don't think it's going to. That's it fits there on the front bumper. Well. When they hit it here, you can see they tore a piece of it here. I'm going to see about cutting that up. They tore, see this little tab? There's a tab there. And there's one missing there. There's a tab there. And there's tabs all along this thing. You can see them on the other side there. So there's tabs. But these three tabs here, are broken off this one here and I have here's the tab little son there's a tab that fits in there so what I was planning on doing is drilling a hole in the middle of where it ripped out putting a, uh, a bolt through it with a self-locking nut and a washer and tightening these up because I can here's the bumper it's just these first three right here these first three in the bumper I can reach my arm way back up in here okay? I can reach my finger all the way up in here so I could put the nut on the washer on once I push that thing on the fender you know I can't do nothing about this big dent in here and this gash that cover may cover some of this um, so that's what I'm going to have to do. I'll probably go over to Ace Hardware. They have some uh, some parts for that. So that's kind of where I'm at on that one. Uh, so if I get those, I'll maybe get a little washer and nut. I might get some, I'll probably get to go grab some black spray paint from up in the shop. Spray paint the heads and washers so when I, when I put them on the bumper they're already black. Uh, and then just push those through there, snap that on, and um, uh, that bumper should be done. The brackets were... I tried to order the brackets from uh, from Amazon, and I got to the cart to, to ship them, and they said they couldn't ship them to me. And it said something about weight, and those things don't weigh anything. We've got other stuff heavier than that, so I ordered them somewhere else. The only thing that I bought from Amazon was those snap-in tabs. 
I ordered the other three from, uh, I think I went Rock Auto and, uh, or was it, uh, was it Rock Auto? I think it was Rock Auto or uh, what's the other one? Uh, uh, something, I can't remember what it was. But uh, I ordered the three from there. I'm like, okay, Amazon, what? why even have these on your website if you can't ship them? So, if you get to Amazon, make sure that <laughs> it could be shipped because you might get to your body. Well, it said it couldn't ship it to my address. And I'm thinking, really? So, I don't know why. I just moved on and got it from somebody else. I paid five bucks extra a piece, extra fifteen dollars to get them from somebody else. So that's what I did. Um, rained all this week, so I had to wait till Friday to put this bumper on. But on Wednesday, I took my truck into the shop and uh, it was throwing a code. And the only thing I have is a code reader, so all I could do is read the code. It was some uh, PO three hundred or six hundred or something like that missing. So. Flo and I thought, I said, well, I'll take it in Wednesday. Maybe it's just like a O2 sensor or something easy. They can fix it, and we go camping this weekend. So I took it in Wednesday, and then I had to go out to Blue Springs, took the car out there, and um, they said it was the uh, crank sensor and the distributor. I was like, oh man. I said, well, how much is that going to take to get put in? And they quoted me like $1,200. I was like, oh, geez, come on, really? So I said, okay, uh, I can still drive it. I can't just drive I can't drive it on the highway over 2,000 RPM. It only goes 60 miles an hour, and that's about it. I can drive around town uh, as long as I don't put my foot into it, which this truck moves around okay. Uh, just fine. It's just I can't ride on the highway. And we couldn't go camping this weekend. It's a beautiful weekend out. I was just, we did go yesterday, Saturday. It was a beautiful day. We went out and checked uh, four campsites up north of us. And I think we might be going to like three of them. So we found some extra ones. But the bad thing this year is that uh, the one site we went to uh, has no reservations where we couldn't get into it the year before because it had reservations. It's, it's these people just go in with people who have more money than cents and they rent all these really nice spaces up and they never show up. There's times that we've we've gone and found some space that wasn't ideal what we wanted, but we've, we've seen, I bet you, four or five sites that had tags on them where people could, uh, uh, that they were already reserved and nobody showed up. <laughs> Gee, I, I don't know. That it seems like they, they could have some kind of better better system. I don't know what you would do to make sure people show, showed up uh, to the sites. But but then at the beginning of the year, if you want to go camping, if sometimes they're they're booked up for like three months, three four months, they're booked solid. You can't get into any of these uh, campsites because everybody. It seemed after the pandemic or during pandemic, and now it's. Everybody has found camping, so to get out of their house, they had to find something to do. So now there's a whole bunch of people out there camping, and a whole, you know, you had problems sometimes when you go into a place that you couldn't find a place to park your vehicle because there wasn't any. So I don't know. It's a it's a dilemma. So on this one here, I put the crank sensor on. I'll show you that if I can, if you can see it here. It's up underneath. This was, I uh, did this in the rain on Wednesday, thinking that if I put this on, that it would at least solve some of the missing problem and maybe we could go camping. Uh, yeah, where is it? It's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Bitchy. Oh man, can you see it? Okay, let me get over the top. I can tip this screen. Let's see if you can see it. There's something. That's it right there. There it is. Right there. That was fun getting that, but uh, I had put a tarp over the top of the truck and, and, it, and uh, I put some on the uh, camper here. 
Actually, there's the tarp I used. <laughs> I put the tarp over the uh, the camper, put a couple rocks on it, put uh, a couple on the threw the tarp over the hood, put some rocks on those or bricks, whatever I had, and then I crawled underneath there and changed that out. It didn't change anything, so I was like, Ugh. so I ordered a distributor. My brother sent me a distributor; it might work in it. So uh, hopefully this week or next weekend. Uh, I'll be able to uh, do that. So today I'm just um, I'm going to put a, a, a serpentine belt on and an idler. Not a big deal. I might I'll probably just show you it. Uh, it's not a big deal to do. The hardest thing is probably just uh, re put it in the. Uh, serpentine belt the way it came out <laughs> there is a little uh, description on the front here and I was thinking of something else I was going to say um, I can't remember I will remember so let's get back at this serpentine thing here and see what we can do you can just get close you can just get close I don't have a clamp or a magnet that I can put this thing on, or I would for you. I'll show you later. Or you watch somebody else's video that does a better job than me. There's a little square in here, you use this ratchet end. A half inch goes a half to three eighths. So there's a little notch in this tensioner Let's put this thing to and that helps you take the up the other way it helps you loosen up this belt but you can take it off the pulley take it off the pulley yeah easier said than done huh? gotta get another click fingers out of there. Okay. Now the tension comes out. And okay. Glove off here. I can unlatch this thing without dropping it. And there we go. Turn the screen so I can see what I'm doing. Right down there. My ratchet. What I did is I tightened that up and took the belt off this, took the belt off the pulley here. So that's what I did. I'm gonna shut this off. Move on. Alrighty. Got this off. This is the idler. Yeah, this feels kind of sloppy. It's got this little clip in it. We gotta pull that clip out of there. Usually you have to kind of dig up the edge of that clip a little bit and cut it off. It doesn't have to go back on again. Let's see if we can get the cutters on each there. Okay, this is it. Here's the back piece. Here's the front piece. Huh. Seems like it's loose. Okay, well, he's talking about something else. Let me go look. Okay, it was the tensioner pulley that was bad. So this one's actually good, but I've got it off already. So I'll replace both. Not a big deal. It's like it's nine bucks or something like that. And it's a AC Delco, so it's not like a cheap one. It's the other one that's bad. I'll have to order it. It's not that big deal to put it in. So put that in there. In there. There you go. So we got a 
me. Okay, I'll save it for a rainy day. So I'll go put this back on, torque it, and then we'll see about if we can get the belt back on it. Alright, I'll show you the tensioner pulley. There's the tensioner pulley. See it? It's got some play to it. The idler, idler pulley is up here, right up here. That's where that one goes. So this other one was loose. There's actually a bolt behind this. You take that bolt off and this comes off, I guess. Or I have to take the whole thing off. I'm not sure. I'll have to see. If I have to take the whole thing off, I'll have to take the upper part of the shroud off. That would be so much easier to do it that way. I might replace I might replace that whole the whole thing the whole uh, tensioner. We'll have to see, but I'm going to try to put the belt on now. So I'm going to shut it off so you don't hear all my uh, <laughs> so you don't hear all my cussing and swearing putting that on because it's going to be a bugger. It is okay. Okay, got those holes drilled. the holes drilled. I'm going to put those little ends that broke off in the fender. Goes right about there. Once I get those in place and I'll be able to hammer them in. And on the back sides of them, I made the uh, washers bend over a little bit so it fits around fits around the back side like that. It should hold it on there uh, tight. So that's the thing I thought of, and I don't know if it's going to work. That sounds good. So let's see about getting this thing. Popped in place. It's through. Put the washer on it. In there. Looks like it is. About to get a Q-tip out and uh, touch up these. Some of these washers got. Alright, let's see if they'll go in. Alright, that one. 
one's in. That one's in. That one's in. All right. I've got a 10 millimeter wrench in the back. That's as good as it's gonna get. Doesn't look like it covered up my little dent here. A little dent down here, but you know, it is what it is. I'll get a Q-tip. I'm gonna come back out here, touch this up. I need to touch up that red paint. Yet. So overall, not bad. Not too bad. Finished it off. Had it on. Looks a lot better than it did hanging off to the one side. So, wasn't able to uh, get a lot of shots of that idler pulley in there and, and putting that serpentine belt in. Um, I'm gonna have to replace the tensioner. There's an idler pulley on the tensioner and there's the idler pulley. And I read the ticket wrong and he had the tensioner idler pulley and I didn't, I didn't read it right. I grabbed a hold of that one up there and it seemed like it had some play in it, but I don't know why it felt like it had play because it didn't. So uh, if I had to, I'm going to put that idler tensioner with the idler pulley back on. I'm going to have to take the top off the shroud to the uh, fan and uh, do that. So you'll see how I take the tension off the belt that way. Once I take that all out of the way, I'll be able to give it a better shot. So that'll be another video. So I'm happy with this one. It's back together. Got old red, uh, got a few dents in her. And I had kind of trimmed this up a little bit, but uh, eh, it is what it is. And I can't dwell on what happened. All I can do is dwell on this is done. So this is Selling Guy 60, is uh, part two uh, done. And then uh, we're going to have another one on the tensioner and then I'm gonna have one on replacing that um, uh, distributor uh, you've seen the other video where I put the uh, distributor cap on so I'm gonna have to kind of review that one to make sure I take what screws uh, I, t I remember I taken a bunch of extra screws off I didn't have to so I'm gonna have to review that one and see what screws I need to take off <laughs> so I make it a little bit easier but uh, I might skip through to just doing the um, distributor and what I do to line it up. So um, that'll be next. All right, catch you guys later. Bye. YouTubers, this is going to be on the uh, part two of the. <laughs> Look at this, it keeps falling backwards. Can't get taller. <laughs> I locked that. Uh, this is going ahead with part two. It's going to be a little bit of everything on that bumper. Um, got the distributor in. That was an interesting thing, but I'll show you some stuff later on. Right now, I'm doing my wheels, which I should have done like a year ago. See. This one's the rustiest one, uh, and uh, we're gonna do some more cleaning on this one. Have to kind of wire wheel this one because of the uh, rust on it. But around the inside, 
was uh, on the back side of the wheel. Uh, back side of the wheel is pretty crusty. Right up in here, right around the back of the valve stem, I scraped that down really good. It's kind of chunky. This is the worst wheel of the whole truck, so I thought I would start with this one first. And I'm just roughing it up, taping it off, and then I'll paint it black. And, uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting day today, so get back at it. See if we get her done today. We're going to get her all scuffed up. I'm going to paint it. Probably not going to show much of the camera on painting. I don't want to get paint on my camera. But after I paint it, show you the final, uh, what it looks like. Looks like I need to get a battery here pretty quick. And uh, then we'll go on to some other things. Uh, I had to change the oil this weekend and also put in that uh, tensioner. Uh, earlier in the video, I did the idler and it wasn't the idler pulley that was bad it was the tensioner pulley I didn't read the what the mechanic had to say <laughs> which I should have but I replaced it it's new it's got a new belt on it but I have to take the top off the the shroud around the radiator then you can see me see it a lot ease better on how you take that tensioner off and difference about mine and a lot of the ones they show on YouTube is the ones I show on YouTube are ones that have an electric fan. Well, mine has a fan blade on it, so the shroud goes back towards the engine some more. You can, and I did, take the belt off. It's just a little bit more work, but it's a lot easier taking that cover off the top. So I'll show you that next, but uh, let's get back to this uh, tire and let's get that done. All right, catch you guys later. Yeah, I'm pretty far away, but I guess I can zoom in on this one a little bit while I paint it. There we go. Shaking this cam for about five minutes now. Shaking it upside down. So let's see what kind of mess I can make. one bit of it pretty much all the rest of these are going to be the same 
uh, that uh, I flipped it over and sprayed really good underneath by the valve stem because that's where it's kind of rusty where the valve stem goes into that rim. I wanted to make sure that didn't get any worse, so I laid it on thick. I grabbed about six of these, but this is covering so well, I might be taking some of them back. Bought them at Walmart for $4.98. It's Rust-Oleum gloss, enamel, corrosion resistant, 30% greater. <laughs> greater than what? So we'll let this dry and I'll go fiddle around doing a couple other things here, but uh, I might be able to get all four of these. Oh, I might be able to get all four of these done today. Cool. Okay, we've got it done. I'll show you the tire here quick. I put some thin film of grease around this part here, the inner side of the lip. Then on the back side, I put some great light coat of grease all around the face where it sits up against the wheel and I'll show you this is kind of the Chevy Ford thing that always seems to get everybody and, uh, I did paint this here up here against the surface you can see where the little where the rim sits it gets rusty on there sometimes it uh, it'll stick and around the lip of the axle sha uh, axle uh, it gets stuck there from from sitting so uh, I cleaned that up with the wire wheel and shot some paint on it to keep it from rusting up so hopefully that'll keep everything uh, okay in uh, getting this done so I'll put this all together and then we'll take another shot of it and see what it looks like all right all right, didn't turn out too bad. Let's see if I can get this back far enough. There you go. Eh, not too bad. What do you think about the emblem being red like the truck? I don't know. I'm going to look at that a while. Maybe next time we go camping, I'll take some tape with me. Sandpaper. These are kind of faded. I like the gold. It might look kind of cool red. What do you think, huh? It's the red. So, we just got another three more to go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think that looks good. <coughs> I had two-inch tape I put around this, and it sees little gaps here. I think with the, with a one-inch tape, you can actually get the tape to bend a little bit better around here. But I got a little overspray here and there. I'm not worried about it. It's a work truck. So, uh, uh, so another three more, and uh, maybe next weekend we'll try making the little red dots there. Uh, see how those turn out. So, all right, Mrs. Rick, uh, we'll have some more content after this is all done. All right. Okay. You see the wheel chucks? I got the other side, but there's the final product. Nice. Turned out good. I didn't spray paint the front hubs before I put it all back on. These don't have much problems with the fronts. They were pretty clean. Just the back ones around the axle seems to be clean. But yeah, it turned out nice. So, get the other side done. I think I'm going to call it a day for today. Flo's uh, taking a nap. He's sick all week and not feeling too good today, so I might end up cooking tonight or go out and get something to eat. <laughs> Which is probably the second one. Uh, yeah, don't want her to get well so we can go camping. But if we, if she still feels bad, we're not going to go camping because it's pretty cold out uh, next week. So, all right, we'll have more content for you tomorrow. All righty. So I'm going to loosen up the tensioner, and you should be able to see it, hopefully. I'll try to keep my arms out of the way. Just put this wrench in there, your socket. And loosen it, 
belt comes off. Let me see that. That will take it off. Explain it to you. Well, it's easier said than done here. Okay, here we go. Now we got this. Whoa. Okay. I'll take you out of the deal here. Back you up. Here's the ratchet. Uh, reposition it. What I did is I hook it into that, that square hole there. And I push down on it. Uh, you can see that. Push down on it. And that takes the tension off it. So I get the belt off and I take the belt off right up here. So when I put it back on I'll put you over my right shoulder and you can see me put the belt back on. But uh, So what I do now is take this here's the one I already, there's, here's the new one. So I'll take the bolt out the new one uh, and then it fits in a little, there's a little tab right here right there that fits in the block, you tighten it up to 35 foot-pounds and then we'll put the tensioner belt, we'll put the serpentine belt back on. But Let me flip you over here to my right and you can watch me do this if you can see it. Oh, it seems that I kind of get in the sun. The sun gets in the way sometimes. Let's see if I can get you in there, back it up a little bit. That might be able to give you a little better view of what's going on. We'll try that. All right, so loosen up. And this is a it's 15. Uh, 13 millimeter. And guess what? The new one going in is 13. The old one coming out is. Not the right size. That's right. Ha! Let me go grab my... Alright, let's see what size this is. Fifteen. Oh, that was fifteen. Okay. Fifteen coming out, maybe thirteen going back in. <laughs> the new bolt. So let's see what we got. I'll tell you about the shroud that goes over the top of the fan here. It's got some of those plastic clips like we had when we went to take the bumper off up here around the other latch. bolt first and then I'll put it in the little notch. Okay, bolt's in. Kind of got to hold it in there while you tighten up the nut for the bolt. Sure, it stays in that notch. I'm gonna get crooked. 
cranking something off. Alright. So take the 15 out there, and now we'll put the 13 on there. Bolt's the same diameter, just the head is a different. On. The bolt is a different size. torque wrench. Okay, we're back. Um, I got a little 3 8 inch pound meter. So uh, it's 35 foot pounds for this bolt. I have an inch pound meter so I just do 12 times 35 is 420. So 420 inch pounds should be 35 foot pounds. So that's where we're at right now. here so you can watch me put this belt on. Make sure I'm in. Let's see where am I? There I am, right there. There we go. Hopefully my shoulder won't get in the way. Make sure everything is routed correctly here. Everything's in the groove. on there, tensioner. Down. So I get this belt over the top here. Okay. Double check your... I tell you, I'm dropping tools all over. look down there and then I'll give it a quick start. Make sure that the belts line up nice. So it's all on. Let's see. Okay, it all lined up. All right, back. Okay, we got that all on. Here's the shroud. Goes over the top. There's two bolts here that are 10 millimeter. So you got two 10 millimeter bolts, and then you have uh, one here, one here. I'll show you once I get it all together. It's got those little pop-in clips like the ones up here in the... No! <laughs> too far, too far. Okay. There's little notches that, that thing fits in here. Alright, I'll show you what's going on. So here on the front we have two of these bolts. Oh. They go in the front here. Uh, let's get these started. One there. And one here. Then down here, you can see that. Takes these little pop deals here. See that? So 
Plug fits down in there. Push that in. And we have another one way back in here. Push that one down in there. Snap it in place. And you're good. I lost one of my other ones here. So I'm going to take one off the top here. Take one off the top here and put it in there. I had my screwdriver under and flipped it. It landed over there somewhere. And <laughs> I can't find it. But, uh, so that's it. I just tighten up these bolts and that's the cover. So that's about it for this one here. Um, ugh. About to get you into the garage and uh, drop the tool. Get you into the garage, show you that distributor that I took out. Uh, didn't seem like it had any play to it, and they said it had play, but the inside of the cap is all messed up. I put the cap on five months ago and about 4,000 miles ago. And in those 4,000 miles, it chewed up that new XL cap. So it's nobody's fault. I, I didn't know anything about the, the wiggling around, or I would have grabbed a hold of that. And, and uh, if I would have felt some play, I would have got a distributor five months ago. So uh, as soon as I get done, I'm going to drain the oil in this. Once I get that draining, then I'll take you in. And I'll shoot a little video about that uh, the distributor. So. All right, I'll see you in a, in a few. Hey, everybody thought I'd show you this. We'll get right down there. If you look at this thing, it doesn't, don't feel anything. Loosen it. I mean, it's moved, the bottom's moving around because I can't hold it tight. But I don't feel anything loose in it. But then I kept thinking about it. I said, okay, it's down in the engine. And it's up against the, the, uh, oil pump and this is up against the cam it's down in there now I can feel the loose you want it's when this is pushed down there it's all nice and tight but once you get it puts it into place you can feel the looseness you can hear it clicking back and forth so that was the short-lived uh, nice Excel cap <laughs> I had it on five months, and I think about 4,000, 5,000 miles, it, uh, it got worse. Because the reason I changed the cap, because it was missing. And the cap I took off, that uh, was pretty crusty. So I thought that was the problem. Well, I put the new XL cap on there. I didn't, it didn't miss when it got wet or anything like that. So I figured I'd solve the problem. And then, then this big miss came in, and through the code, I... Uh, I don't know, what's it, uh, OD600 or 300 or whatever, the, whatever the code was for misfiring on, uh, on multiple cylinders misfire. So it's working great. Got the oil changed, uh, and you see at the, um, uh, I, the tensioner pulley on there, and then I put the idler pulley, which I didn't need, but it's on there. New belt. Uh, tires are nice, or tire, the rims are nice and shiny now. I'm going to paint those centers red. I thought about it, slept on it, and I came out and looked at it and said, yeah. So once we go camping, I'm going to zip those little caps off real quick, sand them down, and I'll paint them red. <laughs> I'll get 25 more horsepower. I know I will. So that's about it for part two. A little bit of everything. Front bumper, uh, idler pulley, tensioner pulley. Uh, what else did I do on there? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, the... Um, Distributor, which I didn't go through. I didn't put anything in there. Uh, if you want to, you can look at uh, one of my past videos of changing the cap out and just think about it going a little bit past that and pulling the distributor out. It popped right in. Uh, I took it out and I lined up the two dots on the bottom of the, of the uh, shaft here. There's a... Uh, okay, I've got to find the white spot here. White line here somewhere. Yeah. You line these two things up here, there's two dots here, and then you line it up with a white line on here somewhere, and then you slide that in there. And if you want to know all the ins and out of it, there's a lot of videos out there that shows it popping into place. And I was lucky it just popped right in there. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I started it up, I was like, thank you, Jesus again, and it started up and ran fine. So 
hopefully this, uh, this is Sunday, so hopefully next weekend maybe we'll do some camping or something. Uh, head down to uh, maybe Hillsdale or Lacine, wherever we're going to go. Want to get some more camping time in before the snow flies. Uh, see, it's supposed to be like 60, 70 tomorrow, and it was like 50s this week. Uh, that was not until like noon, it was 50 degrees. So uh, quite a change in this time of the year. So, hey, I got a couple football games to watch today, and I'll edit this all up and put it on, put it on the, the tubers. So this is Selling Guy 60. Uh, be good to your neighbor, good to people around you, and when you have to, just suck it up like I do and put a mask on. I'll be glad we don't have to wear them dumb things anymore, but we're not quite there yet. All right. Take care. Bye.